Hi class, we're going to go over chapter 17 today. Uh, the previous chapter, chapter 16, dealt with the predetermined overhead rate. So we knew what our materials were, we knew what our labor is, and then we had to estimate our overhead because overhead needs to be put into the process. You see, the, the important thing here to remember is that overhead, yes, we would like to put the actual overhead into our project, into whatever we're making. If it's that chair that we're making, we want to put the overhead into that chair. But to get the actual overhead, unfortunately, it takes a long time to figure out what all the overhead costs are. We don't have it all readily like we do the materials and labor because materials, we know exactly what's going in. Labor, we know how long people have been working. But the overhead are so all these other different kinds of costs that we're not sure of until usually months later. So that's why we calculate an estimated overhead rate, a predetermined overhead rate, and then we allocate it based off of, well, it could be direct labor hours, it could be square footage, it could be batches. There's all kinds of ways we can allocate it. So that's why the predetermined overhead rate is calculated by taking the estimated overhead divided by some sort of activity, some sort of cost driver. And so that's the formula that we learned in Chapter 16. Well, to be perfectly honest, Chapter 17 is the same stuff. There's really nothing new in this chapter except we're not going to have just one rate. See, this is the traditional approach. Chapter 16 is the traditional approach. In Chapter 17, it's activity-based costing. We're going to have multiple activities. We're going to take this pool of overhead, instead of just allocating it using one rate, like Chapter 16, we're going to have, we're going to divide it up into multiple rates. And it's not too hard to do it. You do it the same way. Instead of just calculating one rate, we're going to calculate many rates. Two, three, maybe four. Well, the chapter starts off by talking about different types of overhead activities. How are we going to divide these up? Well, here are four of the most common ways to divide up our overhead. We could look at our, all of our overhead costs and say, well, these overhead costs are best allocated using units. Maybe some are best allocated using batches. So whenever you see the word batch or setups, that's going to be a batch because it's saying these overhead costs are associated with some sort of batch or some sort of setup. Then you have product level activities. So maybe some of the overhead costs are best allocated to different product lines. You know, maybe these are for the chairs only. So we're going to take those overhead costs and only allocate them to the chairs. Remember, we might also make tables. Well, maybe some of the overhead costs are better allocated to tables. So we take those overhead costs, and we wouldn't give any of those overhead costs to the chairs because they're strictly associated with the tables. You see, before in the last chapter, we didn't care. We just allocated all these overhead costs based off of one activity base. So whether it was tables or chairs, they would get a portion of it, which sometimes isn't fair. So that's why we might find some of those overhead costs might be associated with specific product lines. And if they are, we're going to divide them up and somehow allocate them to each of the different product lines. And then facility, that's kind of the catch-all. If it's not a unit, not a batch, or not a product, then it's a facility. And in this chapter, they don't even allocate any of the facility costs. So when you're doing the homework, it doesn't really ask you to do it this way. It doesn't say, well, are these unit or are these batch? It kind of just tells you, well, we're going to allocate these using setups. We're going to allocate these using engineering hours. Whatever it tells you, that's how you're going to have to allocate it. So you're probably going to have to come up with a predetermined overhead rate first. So you're going to have to get those estimated overhead costs divided by whatever the activity base is to get your rate. Okay, so in the chapter, I just wanted to point something out. Uh, it goes through the process of uh, allocating the overhead. And the first part, the first example, is actually the traditional overhead rate. So in your textbook, uh, Exhibit 6 is using the traditional overhead rate. So when you're doing that, just make sure that, that, that you understand that this is what we learned in the previous chapter. Okay, the overhead rate there was $1.16 per gallon because they took the estimated overhead rate divided by the gallons and they got a dollar sixteen. So that's how they're allocating this overhead to vanilla, marshmallow, caramel delight, gingerbread, cheesecake, okay? Then in exhibit seven, this is from chapter 17. Exhibit six is chapter 16 information, just showing you how we did it in chapter 16. But exhibit seven 
is showing how they're doing it in chapter 17. That one's the activity-based costing, so be very careful. They're different calculations. And in the activity-based costing one, they're allocating the overhead based off of gallons, based off of batches, and based off of number and ingredients. And as you read through the chapters, you'll see how they calculate the overhead rate for each one of those. And that's all coming from exhibits three, four, and five. So they're figuring out how we're going to allocate the overhead between those. So I hope this helps you as you're studying for the chapter. This is a chapter that you're probably going to have to read through several times to make sure that you really understand it. Even though as you're reading it, just make sure you think the whole time, what, what are we trying to do here? What's the purpose of this? Because it truly does make sense. You just got to get it in your brain, what they're actually saying and why we're doing this. Don't just read the chapter saying, okay, I see what they're doing, I see what they're doing. Don't do it that way. Make sure you understand exactly why they're doing it. Not just understanding, oh yeah, they're doing this, but why are they doing it? So good luck with the chapter. If you have questions, come to my office hours, give me a call, and I'll try and help you out. Thank you.